The ghost of future shortstops past has returned as Jose Barrero has been called up and joins the Reds in Miami tonight. The Reds' young guns are exceeding expectations in the rotation, and they are missing a lot of bats. And Mike Miner could have a major problem holding on to his spot in the rotation, or could he? We'll discuss all that and more right now on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked on Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We have been lifelong Reds fans, and we have turned an addiction of this Reds team into information for you every single day. I've been doing this about four years. Steve's been doing it four years. We joined up about the beginning of this year. We've got a lot of years of podcasting in us, and we are talking about this Reds team on the Locked on Reds podcast, part of your a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms. Today's episode, we are going to look at a couple of different things, whether Mike Miner is pitching for his job or not, how the young pitching, which is the most important part of this Reds team the rest of the way, is looking as of late, spoiler alert, they're looking pretty good, and the return of Jose Barrero. But first, we want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Listen, before we get started today, uh, <laughs> I wanted to take a minute. Uh, we all saw the news that the baseball world has lost a true legend, a true giant. Uh, for many people, the voice of the game. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Vin Scully, the longtime great broadcasting legend for the Brooklyn and then Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, Vin Scully brought generations of people to baseball. He told a story unlike any other person ever has, ever could, or probably ever will again. Losing him yesterday, I'm sure our listeners and you, like me, have reflected back on baseball memories and times we listened to Vinny call a game and games, big moments, the Kirk Gibson home run in the 88 World Series, uh, all-star game memories, playoff memories, Dodger baseball memories. Lots of times, Jeff, I would watch a Reds game, and uh, when that game was done, I would turn on that West Coast feed, and I would listen to Vin Scully uh, and just be, you know, like a little kid listening to, to Grandpa at story time almost is really how it felt. Uh, you know, he would talk about how uh, – a great defender that Dom DiMaggio was compared to Joe DiMaggio because he watched them both play. He would talk about, you know, the evolution of the game and how things have changed and what he liked about it and what he didn't. But he always did it with grace and he always did it with style. And he always did it in such a way that you felt like you, you walked away not only learning something, but that you had a great time doing it. And, you know, for me, it was it's just a big loss for the baseball world. I think the most important part about Vin Scully is he made broadcasting, it, it, he made a baseball game feel like it was just part of who you are. And he was, he had this innate ability to not seem like an elitist, you know, like I, I feel like there's such a mentality amongst certain members of the media of, you know, they're like superiority or something like that. He just seemed like an everyday dude that was bringing the game to you every single day. Like he was your best friend talking to you about baseball. And he made for somebody who grew up realizing I wasn't going to play the game, but I would like to cover the game. He made it feel accessible and he's got two distinctions that will never be broken. There's nobody that's going to broadcast for the same team longer than he did 67 years. No, nobody's going to touch that. And then nobody's going to touch his thing for being the youngest guy to broadcast a World Series game. He did it when he was 25. He did it when he was younger than most of the players that we see get called up nowadays. So I, I think that he's going to go down 
obviously is the best baseball broadcaster of all time, probably the best broadcaster, period, for my money. I mean, you know, he's up there. I mean, it's him and John Madden. I I don't know who else you really put in that upper echelon. So he's absolutely going to be missed. Well, I think, Jeff, before we roll into this episode, I think what I'd like to do is just include for, for our listeners one little taste of Vin Scully's signature open when he broadcast the Dodgers game. It's time for Dodger baseball. Vin Scully, true legend lost. Rest in peace. He's definitely going to be missed. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, Steve, let's jump into some Reds talk. I know it's it's kind of funny after talking about Vin Scully, a guy that would make anybody like the Dodgers, even Reds fans, uh, at least for just like a moment of their lives. But let's get back to the Reds. Let's talk about what's going on because today we got some big news. Jose Barrero is back and he is, uh, I, I believe he is going to be in the starting lineup. He should be. And we'll get into why here in just a moment. But it was first reported by Francis Romero and then confirmed by C. Trent that he is headed to Miami and he will join the team on the active roster today. And my first question to you is something that we have not really talked about. And I think that it's probably a little bit of shoulda, woulda, coulda, but had the owners not imposed this lockout this past winter, would the hammy problem that he had have affected him so? You know, that's a that's a, a great question to ask. And, and first of all, I just want to shout out Nick Craw for listening to our live broadcast last night and me saying <laughs> I wanted Jose Barrero to be the guy. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, very well could be a different story if spring training had started on time, Jeff, because... At the very least, the Reds would have identified that problem sooner. It could have gotten treatment sooner. It could have begun healing sooner. Uh, it could have brought him back sooner, which could have got him up to the Reds sooner. Now, like you said, it's it's a great big game of, well, if this had happened or if that had happened. Because you can do that with a lot of things. I think if spring training had started all time, on time, there would have been a lot less pitcher injuries. There would have been hitters would have been hitting the ball sooner than they were because of the late start you know lots of differences that you could point at uh but the fact of the matter is he he did miss a significant amount of time uh he did have the injury and uh since being back he really i mean listen i want the guy to be successful but he really has not done anything that has made me say see now is the time i mean you know like i said on our live episode uh that was so much fun to do Uh, What I want is for him to not be results based. I want him to be up. I want him to be with the big league club. I want him to play and I want it to be about repetitions, not results, because this team is not going to make the playoffs. So this is now the opportunity for Jose Barrero to either claim a spot or for the Reds to be able to move him on down the road and look at the next guy up. This is really uh, not just for Jose Barrera, but for the Reds as a whole, as we as Reds fans too, it's about the journey now. It's not about the destination. The destination is going to be in a couple of years. So we are in the middle of the journey. And for the rest of this season, I almost want them to uh, act like it's spring training. Like when a dude struggles, but you know he's got to be part of the future, you just got to let him work through it. And Jose Barrera is going to be one of those guys because make, mo- make no mistake about it, you were exactly right. His numbers at AAA don't inspire any sort of confidence as to what we're going to see. Expectations should be low to start because in AAA, in 237 at-bats, Steve, he slashed 209, 262, and 377. Yeah, and that's not okay. even the most concerning number of, of his AAA numbers. That that strikeout rate that he, he is boasting down there at 37.6% is a problem that has simply not been addressed. Yeah, it's uh, something that we talked about a lot during 2020 with him is that, man, he just strikes out a lot, doesn't he? Pretty much comparable uh, K rate there. But I still want to see him at shortstop, at shortstop every day. Don't tell me that Kyle Farmer needs to be playing over him because that means that you're still trying to get everyday wins. You're trying to worry about the everyday machinations of this team. Kyle Farmer has done an amazing job. This is not to take away from what he has done as the Reds shortstop. He's been gritty. He's been um, a stabilizing presence there, but he is not the shortstop of this team in the future. Jose Barrero has that chance. It's time for him to show it. 
No, absolutely. And listen, we're not saying that you take Kyle Farmer and you stick him on the bench and, and you just let him rot over there for the rest of the season. Uh, with Brandon Drury gone, uh, there's going to be more reps available at third base. Uh, you know, I bet you that right-handed Kyle Farmer could play first base if you ask him to. Uh, there would be opportunities to get him in the lineup. And I think you're right for Barrero to prove himself. He needs to prove that he can hit. He needs to prove that he can play that shortstop position and play it. Well, uh, at least he needs to prove that he can play it better than Kyle farmer is right now. Uh, this is, this is a huge test for Barrero. And, you know, I hate to say that there's a lot of pressure on him, but there should be a lot of pressure on him. He should really be feeling the pressure of having to come up and perform right now. Never mind the reds record. Never mind that, you know, they're out of it already. And, and you think, well, he can just kind of come up and free swing no he has something that he needs to prove yeah because and we mentioned this on the live show yesterday he has an expiration date on that shortstop of the future he's been the shortstop of the future for what feels like a millennium it's only been like three years but like it feels like forever it's time for that to go away he needs to either be the shortstop and out or he's got to find somewhere else to play because there's so many guys coming up behind him that can play that shortstop position at a high level so for him to just kind of work isn't gonna work i i think i think that's absolutely correct uh there is there is a lot of young talent as we've seen uh, in this farm system now that all play the position of shortstop so uh when you look around uh even a year ago we looked at barrero and we're kind of like he really needs to make it because there's not really much else to come up and do this well that's not true anymore so again pressure mounting uh, he needs to perform and uh, at the end of the day the big takeaway i think is that jose barrero needs to sink or swim jeff uh, listen, coming up, I'll tell you who is definitely swimming and not sinking, and that is the young guns in the Reds starting rotation. They are definitely delivering uh, with everything that they are dealing. And if you want to deliver with your next jewelry purchase, you should head over to BlueNile.com right now. Because whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, you can find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of shopping online at BlueNile.com. You can hold the engagement ring. You can build the engagement ring of her dreams. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring, making each ring they make a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. And if you're looking for fine jewelry to celebrate a special moment, but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile can help you with that also. They have jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on right now, the Blue Nile anniversary sale, you can save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order from BlueNile.com is insured, it ships for free, and it arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away the surprise about what's inside. You can shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Thanks again for making Locked on Reds your first listen every day because we are your team every day. After you're done with this episode, go check out the Locked on MLB Prospects podcast. Lindsey Crosby dives into the trades that sellers like the Reds made. He'll look at the talent and how the future of those selling teams looks after the deadline. Uh, that podcast is free and available just like Locked on Reds on all major podcasting platforms. All right, Jeff, as as much as we have talked about people that need to get it together, people that need to take advantage of their opportunities, there are three guys in this starting rotation right now that have not had a problem with going out there and, and shining in the spotlight that they are just absolutely delivering. That, of course, Hunter Green, Graham Ashcraft, and Nick Lodolo. The triumvirate, as I would like to call them, Steve. Yes, these guys have absolutely been kicking but they are the most important part of this team moving forward for the rest of this year, probably for the next couple of years, because you're looking at really the next big three. We had uh, Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray, 
in Tyler Malley a couple of years ago. Now we've got Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, and Graham Ashcraft. And the reason we're saying that is because after last night's absolute gem of a performance from Graham Ashcraft, these three dudes have put together three straight starts of absolute beautifulness, the kind of sparkle that I think Blue Nile would be jealous of. Very good, very good. Yeah, that that those last three starts, Jeff, they've combined for twenty and a third innings pitch. They've only allowed one earned run, uh, ten hits, two bases on balls, while striking out eighteen uh, in those combined three starts. That that two, the two is the amazing part because we've talked about this before about young guys who came up in years before where they had trouble with control, trouble with command. We've seen a very, very focused group of these three dudes of Ashcraft, Green, and Lodolo these last couple of games. The 18 strikeouts is pretty nice. Uh, looking at Ashcraft, last night was just more the same. His last seven starts, so not that small of a sample size, Steve. Last seven starts, 30 strikeouts, 10 walks. And listen, like that's that. a... That's a three to one ratio, Jeff. And like you know, that that's something that's that's really hard to beat. But wait, that is not that hard to beat. Because you know who's beaten it? Hunter Green has beaten it. Last seven starts, Jeff. 42 strikeouts, only 13 based on balls. Mm -hmm. Hunter Green has been just missing bats. He's been blowing it by people. He's been getting the K's. Uh as much as we worried when he struggled off and on early in this season, I really think he's beginning to find it. He's settling much more into grooves. You start to see him pull the string a little bit and, and keep hitters off balance. He's not quite there yet, but it, he's definitely improving. I see progress. It's a very good progress, Steve. But wait, there's more. Nick Lodolo, his last seven starts, he's got 50 strikeouts to 13 walks. Same walks, but more strikeouts. Just oh, these man. three guys, you put them together. This is what we're talking about. These are the reasons. Because people are, got so discouraged when they saw the trades, folks who weren't listening to us, apparently, when they saw the Reds trading all these guys away, these three guys are why we're looking at 2024, 2025 as the years when the Reds are back, baby. And it's because these dudes are doing it right now. Can I tell you how excited I am about what Nick Lodolo has been doing? Oh. I mean, you know, he had that rocky first start where it was clearly nerve-induced problems. Mm. I mean, he was obviously very nervous. But since then, he's just continued to get better and better and better. It is just that smooth, easy, lefty gas that people just don't know what to do with. He... It was funny because he and Hunter Green did a season ticket member uh, Q&A the other day, and I definitely came away from it not thinking he had, like, a ton of personality. We asked him, like, you know, we had, like, different kids ask him, what's your favorite music? What's your favorite movie? Which, you know, he's just like, you know, I don't really get into all that. He should have followed it up with, you know what I worry about? Getting people out. Striking people, people out, out, baby. Because that's what he does. I mean, you see him on the mound and you know, like, this dude eats, sleeps, breathes, everything pitching. Like, he is an amazing pitcher right now, and he just got started. Oh, no, no question. I, it's it's just, I got I got to tell you, it's it's hard to not be excited. And I find myself in a weird place with this team sometimes, Jeff, because you look at the standings and you look at some of the things that have gone on and, and you, if you read Twitter, don't read Twitter. Yeah. Well, read me and Jeff on Twitter, but don't read <laughs> yeah. the rest of Twitter, but you, you read these things and you would think that there's just absolutely nothing to be excited about and absolutely there nothing is. to like, hold on to, to, to be jazz, but man, every time I look at, Oh man, Lodolo's going today. Oh man. Green is going today. Oh, it's Ashcraft. I get excited. It, it's fun to watch. And, and I, I'm just, I can't wait every time I'm looking so forward to watch how these three guys continue to develop and do it together. I am looking forward and I hope it happens multiple times the rest of the way, but I'm looking forward to the, uh, the next start when it happens of maybe Hunter green or maybe Nick Lodolo or maybe Graham Ashcraft goes eight innings. And then Alexis Diaz comes out in the ninth. I can't wait for that. I'm going to be so excited. And if you follow us on Twitter, I'm going to lose my mind whenever that happens, because that is beautiful stuff when you're talking about this Reds team, because honestly, out of the bullpen, I'm not really excited about anybody else. But then you look at, you've got Jonathan India. He's been playing super well here recently, and hopefully we can see Jose Barrero come up. But there's plenty of reasons to be excited about this team, and it starts 
with those three pitchers because for the rest of the year, Graham Ashcraft, Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, they will be the most important part of the Cincinnati Reds. You know, Steve, when we talk about uh, pitching, we can't gloss over the guy who's going tonight. Mike Miner. Mike Miner's had a <laughs> little bit of a struggle of it. Um, is he pitching for his job? <laughs> he might be. Before you segue, every time I think about him, you know that you know that meme or, or the gif, the one with the lady that's like, uh, mm, mm, mm. you know, that mm. one, you know, with the weird faces. That's how I feel every time someone talks to me about Mike Miner. It, just, it makes me contort a little bit. Yeah, it's like, ooh, do we have to? Yeah, yep. Se- yeah. Segway away. Segway away. Let's do this. We're going to talk about Mike Miner and what his future looks like based on tonight's start. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Bet Online. In fact, you can check it out tonight. Mike Miner is on the bump. He's against the the Cy Young. I mean, honestly, it's his to lose. Sandy Alcantara has been the most phenomenal pitcher in the National League. The Reds face him tonight. We're going to see why he's been the most phenomenal pitcher in the National League. And Bet Online has the Reds team total runs over under. At two and a half. Yeah. They're not bullish about the Reds' chances of getting across home plate tonight. And if you're not bullish about it either, you can check it out. BetOnline.net is the fastest, the easiest way to check on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL. You've got MMA. You've got boxing, esports. They've even got golf and you bet online continues to be the top online source for all your sports wagering information head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action that's happening each and every day because bet online is where the game starts thanks again for making locked on reds your first listen of the day make sure you're following us on youtube Because, hey, we went live last night. You don't want to miss that. Cooking up some ideas for some more live shows, maybe some post-series shows. We'll we'll inform you more about those. And if you follow us, and make sure you click the little bell so you get notified. Whenever we go live or whenever we have a new premiere, you're not going to want to miss anything we've got coming for you. As uh, coming up here later this week, we're going to start to look at some of these new prospects that the Reds got and how it affects the top 10 in the Reds farm system. Also, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three F's. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two F's. And you can follow the show at Lockdown Reds. There's no F's in that. All right, Steve. Mike Meyer. Is he pitching for his spot in the rotation yet again? <laughs> uh, I've said all season long that Mike Miner is a major problem. I still can't wrap my head around even even recognizing that he was a panic purchase, that like they were trying to even with that in mind, I'm like, what? What did Nick Crawl look at that made him think that this guy would be successful at Great American Ballpark? It just Nick Crawl was it's at the grocery store and he was just like, I need milk. I need oh man, we're out of milk. There's no milk. Whatever. Soy milk. Let's go. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Because he's not been good this year, Steve. And and really, I was thinking too, I'm like, okay, maybe it's home road. Maybe he's like, you know, road miner or something. Because now road Mally is is twins Mally, so we gotta come up with a different road somebody. That's not the case. On on the road, he's just as bad. At home, he's got a 6.25 ERA and 36 innings. On the road, just 15 innings, so a small sample size. But he's got a 6.46 ERA. And you would think it's because he gives up as many home runs or more home runs or something like that. He gives up 11 home runs on the road and four on the road. Or I, I think I mixed that up. 11 on the He let, he let four home runs at home. Four home runs. Eleven on the road. at home. I'm yes. all messed up. Yes, <laughs> stats, numbers. Mike Miner's not good. Mike Miner's not good. Listen, when you made me play that game about the two truths and a lie, you know it, that one was easy <laughs> because you he gives up a lot of home runs because you can't ground ball for a home run. So you know I knew oh. that that particular stat was a lie. Listen, uh, I think. The answer to your question, though, Jeff, as bad as he is, the answer to your question is no. He is not pitching to hold on to his spot in the rotation. I think that the Reds are going to be reluctant to replace him in the rotation because it would mean bringing up yet another rookie arm, another young guy, and starting the clock on them. And the problem that the Reds are going to have is that Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, 
and Graham Ashcraft are all going to run out of time at the mm. same time. And the Reds are going to have to try and figure that out. So I think they're going to want to stagger the next guys up a little bit. I would be shocked if another rookie makes a debut in the rotation this season. Uh, I think they would do anything else but, but allow that to happen. See, and I think you're reading my mind. Because my idea is replace him in the rotation with Brandon Williamson. Because Brandon Williamson at AAA has a 3.27 ERA. Looks like he's doing all right. Yeah, there's no question he would probably be an upgrade. He would probably have more success. And I still believe Mike Miner in the bullpen where he could just throw his best two pitches. And he's very successful against lineups the first time through. It's after the first time through that they start beating up on him. So I think he could be a useful piece to the bullpen. I think it helps the Reds rotation. It helps the Reds bullpen if you move Miner over there and bring up somebody else. Williamson would be better. But I really do think the the economics and, you know, again, service time, manipulation yeah okay um but for me the right move is to actually not start williamson's clock until next season because there is just no chance that the reds can afford to keep all three of those big gun guys that are starting in the rotation this season so uh there's there's going to be a painful time come where probably two of the three have to be traded and you don't want to be trading three out of four of your starters uh, at that time that's true. I, I do see that because I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, man, there's got to be something better than Mike Miner because even his XFIP, which people say is a better ERA predictor, like what he's going to look like, even that says that it probably should be a run lower, but still a run lower is over five. So you're not talking about a good pitcher then. You're not talking about they're saying, well, things are getting that much better. They might get a little bit better, but not that much. So I don't know. I, w I was looking at it and I'm thinking, man, who else can we get? And I think you're right. I think Mike Miner went from a panic buy to, ooh, maybe let's see if he can play well enough to garner a trade for a prospect to now he's just an innings eater and a guy we're going to throw out there every fifth day and whatever he gives up, he gives up. That's a great point. You know, the inning, the innings eater point. And, and I'm, I'm really struggling. We, we have to find a new way to define things because – you know, innings are different than they used to be. And, yeah. you know, that, you know, that used to, a pitcher used to throw like 10 to 15 pitches an inning and you could kind of gauge everything off of innings pitch, especially with the starters. But, you know, now a hundred pitches that used to get you nine innings get you six. So what I want from Mike Miner is I want him in a game for a hundred to 120 pitches, however far into the game that gets him whether he's given up no runs or whether he's given up 10 runs david bell should not even think about the bullpen until mike minor has crossed 100 pitches because again they're not going to make the playoffs so on the days that mike minor pitches if that 100 pitches saves the bullpen a little bit make it happen uh, I, I think you know abuse him because we're not going to keep him <laughs> that's no that's that's very true steve and i i think i do you you swayed me back i i was thinking ooh, give me some brandon Williamson, but yeah, I think you're right. Let's not let's not start the clock now in spring training 2.0 when the season is lost. Let's evaluate what's up here and we'll go from there. I tell you what, I think that's a good place for us to stop. Which, by the way, before we stop, real quick, I want to test everybody. If you're to this point, comment in this, write down in the comments section your team every day. Just want to see something. Just, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> take her away, Steve. <laughs> All right, Jeff, <laughs> that's going to do it for today. I wasn't expecting you to throw to me. Uh, we're going to be back in your podcasting feeds tomorrow. I don't even have the rundown in front of me, Jeffrey. You really got me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, folks, thanks for listening to the Locked on Reds podcast. You can count on us to have you covered the rest of the way as players get called up, as the youth movement continues in Cincinnati, as players go out and work to try and cement their spot, not for 2022, but 2023. And, and as these games continue to develop, we will be in your podcasting feeds covering this team each and every day. Jeff, it's not going to be pretty every day. But there's a lot to be excited about, and what can people count on us for the rest of 2022? We are going to have exactly where the Reds stand each and every day, and we are going to look at the future and who is going to factor in to that for the Reds because we are locked on Reds every single day. <laughs>